everybody and Happy New Year. I'm Lee Ann Miller with W. Cushing & Company and along with Rug Hooking Magazine, we're happy to introduce for 2022 Third Thursdays with Lee Ann once again. So thank you to Rug Hooking Magazine for this. And this is your latest Rug Hooking Magazine on the cover, beautiful cover by M.Z. Collins of Louisiana. The inside pattern is single paisley so pay attention to that it is and there's an article I wrote on there because this is going to be the video for next month so get your pattern ready order your pattern whatever you'd like to do and we're going to color plan this from pastel to jewel tone next month great issue so last month we talked about snow as a four-letter word when you get 12 14 inches of it it is a four-letter word and so today what we're going to do is we're going to put snow in the pines or snow on the trees and I've hooked some trees in uh, as you can see right here uh, these are the trees uh, they are hooked in and people have trouble with trees hooking trees I know two of you who know who you are but you break your tree down and when you break the tree down it's very easy to hook in two three four colors out of velvet um, this pattern is the holly tree by Joan Moshimer uh, we've adapted it we've taken off the old-fashioned border and made it into a table runner so it has the trees in holly and I will show you the colors that I've used but basically and I will also show you how I've hooked it basically I've broken it down so it's in layers and if you think of this in layers layers is going to be the uh, op opportune word for today layer in the snow layers of the trees layer your clothing to keep warm it was minus two here today so we got to keep warm but by layering in if you notice I started here I went with my second color went back to my first color I stopped so that you can see how I am doing this unevenly so I will come in here with my next color and layer that in which will be the green again what I'm using what I'm using for this tree and I did that with this tree and if you notice there are little points coming out with this finished tree and by doing that you're going, al going to allow your background to come in. By allowing your background to come in, your background is going to define your pine tree. So the two wools that I used for this is great green plaid. New plaid, love it. Used mainly this section of it. A little bit of this did come in. And I used a stripe. If you have a green stripe, and you can use dyed wool, you're more than welcome to. Uh, I use textures for this this demonstration but I cut this way across the stripe so I got all these little hints of color and since it is a herringbone you get little flecks of color and I started at the top and I literally worked my way down I like to start at the top get a feel for the tree work my way down so they these two colors are in this tree well, I like a blue spruce. I don't know about everybody else, but I like a blue spruce. So I used blue spruce and I used a little velvet. This one is hooked a little bit differently. This one I did all in wisps and I put in my wool first and I made little pockets and you can see the blue spruce, it's sporadic. But by putting the wool in first, I just then filled in with the velvet and by filling in the pockets with the velvet I had done the shape of the tree and so the velvet just concreted the tree and if you were to come in with your background you'll have all little wisps I am going to turn it over a little bit so you can see the direction on this one as you can see and I've left the holidays purposely because we've got to put snow on the tree so as you can see I've gone back and forth back and forth but I started up here and I worked my way down but you can see by my direction of hooking how the tree was put together and I am going to finish this tree in a minute after we get done talking and then we're going to put some snow in 
Now this one here, I didn't cut my last piece off or something, I'm not really sure. Oh no, it was on the other tree. So with this one, this went in first, and I did cross over, I don't think, nope, didn't cross over, but this one, the blue went in first, and then I filled in with the velvet. Again, the holidays are so I can put the snow in. And this one, again, is coming down in wisps. I have to put the top in and then come all the way down to the bottom. Do the trees have to be green? No, they don't. I could have done two tones of red. I could have done two tones of blue. I, you could do anything you want. You could do white trees with a blue background. The colors are up to you. Uh, I chose these because we were gonna put snow on it. Other colors you can use for the trees in here, sweet pea for a yellower tree. And this is uh, Shades of Sage, and if you were to use uh, Shades of Sage, you could have used just this to make a very light tree with a little bit of turquoise showing. So now, what are we going to, and then the other, and then the other velvet we could have used, which I did not use yet, is uh, this one here, just the, the, the lighter green. This is uh, khaki, and I think this, I don't know what, this is another green velvet. And you just, what, how do you see if they match? You just have to match them up like you would for wool. I know somebody sent in that question. When I'm picking my velvets, I match them the same way I would as if I was matching wool. And this one I could have used, uh, but I just didn't get to that color tree yet. Now, snow. Let's talk about the four letter word. When I'm gonna put snow on the tree, I can use white velvet if I want it bold. I can use cream velvet. And the reason why I like to use the velvet is it lays on the tree much like snow would. I can use a burly spun cotton. A bur this is not gonna say burly spun yarn. I can use a pearl metallic. If I wanna use that with a little bit of shine to it or I can use something like an Angora or a mohair uh, to give it a little bit of wisp and a more primitive look. If I wanna use and make it sparkle, which we will add the sparkle on last, these are all the Arctic rays that can be used. Um, and remember, when we look at the Arctic rays, this is the concentrated color. If we wanna see what the color is gonna be, we look at it this way and you can see the hints of color. And depending on what you want to put in, you can change your color or add to the sparkle on the snow. And then the white. Okay, so these are the Arctic rays that can be used. Here are some of the dyed wools that can be used. And these would more be used on the base. Um, you can use these on the base. We have Frosty, Snow, Mother of Pearl, and Main Sky. So these are all just different ones that can be used on the base. Uh, you can intermix them with some great texture and intermix the dyed and texture. Uh, Yankee Pinstripe would create layers in the snow and White Cap would also do the same. Uh, white Cap hooks very beigey, very gray. It would go with Main Sky very well for snow. So these are all just options that we have. So now I'm gonna to go to the frame and I am going to hook the rest of this tree because I know everybody wants to see how it's hooked. So we're gonna hook part of this tree and then I'm going to put snow and some glitz on the rest of it. And I'm just gonna use what I would use for a normal hook to hook this. And this is my cut wool, and yes, this is how I pull my wools. Uh, I look at it like a paint palette and pull out what I would like. I have an organized chaos. So we are gonna come on and head over to the frame. And work on it from there. So a lot of times when you're hooking these, what you need to do, or how you need to do this, I'm here, I didn't finish it, and this is all done in a size six, I forgot to mention that before. And I had pulled some of this out, I think some of this is on my frame, 
Yes, it is. There we go. I have a habit of leaving the noodles underneath so that one of the cats can then come in and pull out what I've hooked if I leave it on my frame. So I'm on a six and I am pulling it up to finish it in here. I'm going to snug it up. I put the blue spruce in. Uh, I am now on forest of trees. This is the stripe is forest of trees. Oh no, I'm sorry, this is great green plaid. Sorry, this is great green plaid. And I am gonna pull it up and find my scissors in this mess that I thought I brought. Well, maybe I didn't bring them. That's okay, we'll just let that hang. So now I'm gonna go to blue spruce. So with the blue spruce, I have started to come down and started to come down, but I wanna continue another little layer right in here. So great green plaid, blue spruce. I'm going to come in here just like that and I'm gonna come down like that and go to the next level. Now I am overdoing a little bit the points. So when I put the background in, I don't have to worry about them getting lost. And then I'm going to come right into here, make this a point. I'm not per se following the drawing on the, the um, linen, but I'm using it as a guide to come down into the points. And I'm gonna pull another blue spruce, and then I'm gonna go to great green plaid. And yes, if I had my strip sorters and I was organized, these would all be organized on my strip sorters today, but they're not. There we are. And I'm not packing it in. I'm leaving a little bit of room. I don't know where the snow is going to go. If there's blanks after, I can always come back and fill them back in. Uh, but I don't have to. And I'm going to come into here. Just like that. Come back up here. Now, I'm going to take the great green plaid and come on down. Just like that. And I'm gonna take that great green plaid and make a point and come back in. So this way I am marrying in the two textures and filling in, so to speak. But then I know I wanna come down here again with great green plaid, so I'll continue along that way. Then I'll take another piece of the great green plaid Uh, if we can pull it out, there we go, great green plaid. And I'll start on the other side. And I'll continue this way until the tree is filled in. So you get an overall look, almost a watercolor look. Uh, it depends upon how distinct you want the look to be. You know, if you want the colors to be a little more defined, a little softer, and this is the uh, blended the most. Uh, this tree is blended the most into it. And you can see we're coming down into here. And the texture, because the texture great green plaid has two stripe, two sections to it, or the striped wool like say, uh, shades of sage or forest of trees, when you do that, you get different looks almost every time you hook it so it looks more like a natural tree. And then, so I have my two points right there like that. I am going to come in like that and come down and keep coming down with it. Come back in. And I will keep the two noodles down below um, and work them. I don't cross over. Normally I would have cut one of them by now, but we would. And so by working this one down, working this one in, you have a great blend for a tree. And it looks just um, lovely. It looks like you've shaded it. You've used two textures, and the two textures create the dimension. So now I'm going to just finish this one out to here. 
because I'm sure you're all tired of watching me hook by now. Also, a lot of you have gotten snow who normally don't get snow uh, or more snow than you're used to. Go out and take pictures. See how it lays on the trees. Just take it with your iPhone. Uh, if you don't have snow, check us out on Facebook. We've got a lot of snow pictures and see how they are on the trees. See how they work um, and how it lays. That gives you an idea or a frame of reference. You don't have to do it exactly, but it gives you a frame of reference on how to put the snow and lay the snow in. So there we are. Okay, so I've worked down this one side of the tree. I really like the way it looks. I'll continue into the center. If you notice, I'm doing it in triangles, and then I'll work this section, and the tree will be done. I'll come back up here. I was undecided if I want how I wanted to do the tip of this tree. As you can tell, I started and took out. So I'll go back at the end with whatever's left over and blend them together for the top of the tree. So let's get into the white stuff. The white stuff is a lot of fun. And we'll go, we'll start with one of the trees that is completed. And I'm gonna start in here. And this is a very basic tree. This tree was done more at an angle, not on the triangles, but more as you could tell on an angle. So there are some different things that you can do to start off with. I wouldn't start with the bright white velvet on this one <clears throat> because the colors are deeper. I might start with um, the cream velvet. And the snow should just lay in. And it can lay on the branches. It should lay in the tree. You know, it doesn't have to be clumped. It can be if you so choose. If you want it to be a wet snow and clump it in. We need a bigger one to go in between and get that up. Nope, she's not coming up. She doesn't want to come up. So if it doesn't want to come up, then that means the snow wasn't meant to be in there. So I can come out. I've done this. I can come out into here. I can come right into here and pull that up. So there's the start of the snow. Yes, of course, we do want to lay this on the end of the bow, and normally this would be cut. You can cut and move. I'm going to do it in one continuous just for the ease and the speed. So there's one on there like that. Then you can decide, do you want it to come up here like this? And you don't want to make it even. It's the snow does not fall evenly. That's only in uh, Norman Rockwell or Courier and Ives. The snow is not evenly on the tree. So just because you put this here doesn't mean at every point you have to put it in, but you can tuck it in and let it look just gorgeous the way it is. And the snow is not just on the ends of the branches. The snow does fall into the tree. So with that, you can come in here and do that. Now, if the velvet is not the snow that you want, so here you started the tree. You will go up, I start now, I start hooking the tree top down. I start with the snow base up. And you can always add, don't overdo the snow. But just say the velvet isn't cutting it for you. You can always go to the burly spun. The burly spun is a thicker, yarn. And if I was going to start, I'd start my burly spun here, just like that, and do it in a similar manner to the velvet. The velvet seems to lay a little bit better, um, a little bit more organically. With the yarn, with the burly spun, you do see the loops a little more, but it still adds a beautiful look, such as snow. So you can come in here, come in around like that, and you can see that this would also add snow to your tree. And you could go up the entire length. And when you're done, you always take either a piece of tape or your finger and you fluff it, okay? This is mohair. Now the mohair is very thin. We're gonna put all kinds of snow on one tree so you can see it and then go on to the other one. 
This mohair, you've, you've got to change the size of your hook because it is much thinner and you want to grab it. Mohair works great. Can you combine some of these? Sure you can. Um, you can combine the mohair with the velvet. You can combine the mohair with the burly. And the mohair has a couple of different colors to it. It's strung a little, you know, it's um, spun a little differently. But there's your mohair. Mohair has more of a taupey look. So if you're going with more of a gold or a Jack Frost snow on the bottom, then of course this would be a great, great addition. This is the mohair. Then we have two more. This is the pearl metallic, and the pearl metallic is just an accent. It is on wool, it is uh, an acrylic fiber spun onto wool, and I like to use it in such a way that it adds a little bit of bling, not much, but a little bit of bling, and you should use a smaller hook because it is thin and you wanna grab the loop. And as you can see, it adds a little bit of bling just a little bit, it's a little, and you can steam this, but this adds a little bit more bling to it. it you can add it while you're hooking the snow. Um, it's a lot of different things you can do with it. Um, and you can, you can use it as snow itself. In other words, start in with the velvet, go interior into the tree. If you want it to look a little lighter, a little less dense with the pearl. And the pearl metallic is a great addition, as you can tell. So that is your pearl metallic. The last thing is the white, or white, white. Now this is white, white. And the white, white um, is works, and it works the same way as the cream, but as you can tell, it's a little bit more intense. So I'm gonna put the white, white velvet onto the blue spruce. A little bit. So I'm gonna move my blue spruce guy over. He's pretty laden. We want the, you know, it we need something a little bit brighter to do. So with that, I can come right in here. And I always want to test it in the tree or on the edge of a tree to see what it looks like. So here we are with the other velvet, the sagey, the khaki velvet, and put that in just like that. And you see the whiter velvet really shows up because we've used the darker colors, uh, not, the, not the deeper prim colors, and this is the white. And I think that the um, pearl metallic would also look wonderful under here on this. And you could actually do the pearl. Yeah, the pearl metallic looks really well and works really well. It seems to really bump up the color. See that? So if you notice, I'm coming in and down. So if you wanted it to be a heavy snow, we could use the white velvet. If you notice, the white really bumps. You can use any of these on here. And these all look great, but I really like on my blue spruce, I like my pearl metallic on that one. It looks very nice. And I will just go along all the way through the tree and I will put it in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit in nooks and crooks like over here. So what I'll do, um, my blue spruce wool that I used will become part of my guide. I won't put it every place I've put the blue spruce, but I'll put it in clumps along corners like that. And as you can tell, it's just gonna look beautiful when it's all done. The final touches are the Arctic grays. And the color you use is up to you, but I am gonna tell you it should go in last. And if it goes in last, then you can steam it. If you put Arctic grays in your tree, I would also hint at your base below and put some snow. Now, in this case, because it's kind of a patchwork pattern, you know, you'll do the trunk of your tree, you could base it in snow, or a really great thing to do would be to use all different shades of snow in the background, and that would be awesome. So the tree is sitting in a blanket of snow with its trunk. 
This line I would put in with one of my blues like Yankee Pinstripe um, or something in that nature. Not sure. And again, you don't have to use greens. This applies no matter what color you hook your tree. You could have hooked the tree in shades of red, in shades of white, and use a blue background. It really does not matter what you use. There we go, the aqua. Most people will shy away from this and go with the white, but as you can tell, when it's by itself, it's not as intense a color and adds a, sometimes shows just a little bit better. And when you add this in, you can add it in where you don't have snow or to enhance your snow, if that makes sense. So as I pull it up high, now you have to pull this up very, very high, very high. And then you get the glitter into there. And it just adds a little bit. It's not gonna add a lot. It goes very well with the pearl metallic. Um, and you can add it in places, like I ended the snow here. I could start my Arctic Ray there. And again, this is the last thing and it wedges in. It's just a thread. But that one little thread with that glitter adds a lot of oomph. And so then you would add that in and nestle it in and there is your Arctic Ray with your snow. So you'll continue up. I, I purposely left a, a blank here. I know once I pick my snow, which I'm probably gonna pick the Pearl Metallic and the Arctic Ray, I will start up here and I will do that. The snow does not have, the trees are not identical. They're not the same. The snow doesn't have to be the same. This is a great way to practice or to get a different look each time. Um, then you have different different tones, different hues, but it's all snow on the pines, snow in the trees. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, you can, like I said, background, um, you can pick a background and I would, this is the what I would use to use the divide down the bottom, the blue, and then I would mix in my colors. See how pretty that is? Probably wouldn't use mother of pearl or snow on that one. I would use frosty and main sky and it would make great and look at this in the back. So together they would make a great, great background. I may change it over here. Over here it's a little deeper color and I could go with mother of pearl and snow or just snow. So you can change it up so you can really test the four letter word snow. And don't forget down here and up into here, if you're going to use your Arctic rays to add your Arctic rays so that they look like snowflakes and snow on the ground. So that is how we put snow in trees. Now next month in February, um, we are not gonna do hearts. We are going to do single paisley. Um, we are going to do the single paisley, which is the pattern insert in, in Rug Hooking Magazine. Uh, this is the one that I've hooked. I hook this in colors to match my Prudence rug. But I'm going to show you there's dyed, there's textured, uh, and different color palettes and different ways to hook this. So we'll do about five or six different color plans and some tips and techniques so you can hook this successfully. So I hope that you enjoy the snow if you have it. I hope everybody stays warm and I look forward to seeing you in February. Be well and stay well. Thank you.